Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. Oh man, the last week, Richard and I didn't feel so good. We were under the weather to the point where we actually had to cancel a road trip to the south. He was supposed to go to Charleston, Savannah, to Mobile for their Mardi Gras, which Richard was so excited to take me to. He says, it's the original Mardi Gras. New Orleans took it over after, and then, you know, of course, whenever anyone thinks of Mardi Gras, they think of New Orleans, but it really did start in Mobile. Hey, Richard taught me this. I feel like Johnny Five. Inputs, Devaney. But we couldn't go. We had to cancel our plans. So, to make him feel better, since we're feeling better now, I decided to make one of the most iconic staples of Mardi Gras, well, it's really popular any time of year in the South, red beans and rice. And it really took me a long time to make this, and frankly, it shouldn't have because it's so silly how easy this is. It's a celebration in a bowl, and it's just, you know, something that's gonna be done in no time at all, really. It takes such little work, and the flavor is insanely good. It, the payoff is huge here. And that says something because there's really not much to pay off. It's, it's super easy. With super affordable ingredients as well, always accessible. So let's earn some beads today and go right to the Instant Pot and make some sensational red beans and rice. So the very first thing I wanna add to my Instant Pot is gonna be three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Add that to the pot and of course, as always, make sure that stainless steel liner pot is in your pot before you begin cooking. And now we're gonna heat that oil up. So let's come down to the control panel, hit the saute button, make sure we're on the more or high setting, and we'll give it that heat. If your model has a start button, hit that. If it doesn't, it'll start on its own after a few moments of doing nothing. Okay, and after about three minutes of the oil heating up, I want to add in a holy trinity. Now, if you don't know what a holy trinity is, it is a combination of onion, bell pepper, and celery that's diced up usually together. My supermarket must have known that Mardi Gras was coming up all the way up here in the north. So they had actually in the produce section already pre-chopped Holy Trinity. So I don't have to really worry about doing it myself, which was nice. Cost a little extra, but you know what? Sometimes it's okay if I don't have to chop my own vegetables. Sometimes the magic powers don't work. But what you do to do your own is to take one medium yellow or red onion, could be fine there, uh, about one large bell pepper, it could be green or red, here there's kind of a mix of both, and it looks like they used about half of a red and green bell pepper that they diced up, and it's like about three ribs of celery that will dice up. That's what you do if you're gonna do it on your own. Add that to the pot, and we'll saute for about three or so minutes. All right, perfect, and after about three minutes of our veggie sauteing in the oil, I'm gonna add in about a 13 and a half to 14 ounce package of andouille sausage. It's always usually pre-cooked when you get it. You don't have to use andouille, by the way. You can use any smoked sausage. You can even use kielbasa. You can use kaneka sausage if you're from the south. It's an amazing breakfast sausage that's really only found in the southeast. At least, that's what I know of. If anybody else can find kaneka in any other parts of the country, please let me know. We definitely don't have it up north. But basically what I did was I just took the sausage. It was one large length. Sometimes you get four or five lengths. I just cut them into about a quarter to a half inch size discs and then quarter to each disc like this and that to the pot no more than a pound just don't use more than a pound as well as six cloves yeah I want this nice and garlicky six cloves you can reduce it to three if you want of a crushed or minced garlic here which is basically going to be two tablespoons three cloves equals about one tablespoon when it's all minced and pressed or chopped and we'll saute this for about another three minutes by the way, if sausage isn't your thing, you can use a plant-based sausage or you can just leave it out. But whatever you choose to do, don't go over the one pound suggested amount for the sausage because we don't want to have issues with the pot coming to pressure in a bit. Okay, this is looking good. Let's move on. We're going to add in three cups of a broth of your choice. I am using ham better than bouillon base, which is a concentrate. I add three teaspoons of the ham better than bouillon to three cups of water, and that creates three cups of ham broth, but you can use any flavored broth you want. Beef, chicken, garlic, it doesn't matter. Add that to the pot, along with one tablespoon of a Creole Cajun or Louisiana seasoning. I love Tony Chachery's Creole seasoning. They have a few different flavors. Any will be fine, honestly. This is my favorite stuff for any Creole slash Cajun slash Louisiana seasoning. Whenever I call for that, that's what I use as well as two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. And we're just gonna stir all that up in the pot. And then our final ingredient before pressure cooking is going to be our rice. I am using a long grain white rice. You can use jasmine rice, you can use brown rice, although the cooking time will vary if you use brown. Um, they're all great, I'll show you how to do that. 
Basically what we want to do is we want to put always our rice, always, usually, uh, for this recipe certainly, we want to put your rice in a fine mesh strainer like this and then rinse it for about 90 seconds under the sink doing this so all the water goes from being cloudy when it comes underneath to being clear. That's when you know it's nice and rinsed. I just want to just kind of sprinkle my rice along the top of this. I don't want to stir it in. There's already a lot going on in that pot with all the sausage and the vegetables. I just want to take my spatula and just smooth it down so it's fully submerged the rice inside of the broth. I don't want to stir it. Just like this. That is perfect. All right, so now we're going to secure the lid, make sure that it's in the sealing position. We'll come back down to the control panel now, and we're going to hit the cancel button, and we're going to hit the pressure cook button, or manual button, depending on your bottle. They have changed over from manual to pressure cook now. Um, and if we're using white rice, be it long grain or jasmine, we want to go for three minutes at high pressure. If you're using brown rice, I would suggest 15 minutes at high pressure. Uh, after that, we'll do a natural release. It's going to be the same amount, 10 minutes for each. Okay, so while the rice is cooking without beans, I want to explain why. Rice and dry beans have greatly varied cooking times. If you're making a white rice, be it long grain or a jasmine, you're going to pressure cook for three minutes with a 10 minute natural release. If you're using brown rice, you're going to pressure cook for about 15 minutes with about a 10 minute natural release. That can vary, by the way. Look at my uh, cooking charts on my cookbook if you want a little more al dente versus a little bit more softer. And I didn't want to add in a canned beans just yet now if I was making the rice because I don't want it to get mushy. I want them to still hold their form. And I will be using canned beans and I'll be adding them at the very end. There's no shame in that. And in fact, it could be even a little bit more flavorful and it's going to make the dish cook much more quickly. But if I was using dried beans, you know, if I was using rice, I'd have to cook it for about an hour, maybe a little bit more, and the rice would just become a clump of just sad mush at that point. So that's why I keep them separate. And I just like to add some canned beans at the end. It's very simple that way. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're going to allow a 10 minute natural release. And I'm going to do that whether it was white rice or brown rice in this situation. And now that 10 minutes of a natural release have passed, we're going to finish it off with a quick release. And look at that, barely any steam coming out at all. And the pin drop, that was one of the quickest quick releases ever. All right, let's get that lid off. And there is our cooked rice. And now we're just going to take a spatula here and just stir everything up. So we have our rice now mixed with our holy trinity, which again is bell pepper, onion, and celery, and our sausage. Okay, so look at that. Beautiful rice with some sausage and veggies. But now we got to add the beans, right? Like I said, we're going to add in some red beans from the can, two 15 and a half ounce cans of any kind of red bean, whether it's a red kidney bean, sometimes it just says red beans, so you can use a dark kidney bean, just try to go with the red color. And I'm also using the juices in these cans here, because it's going to create extra flavor, although you can drain them if you prefer. I'm also using a low sodium variety here. And then we're just going to give everything a final stir, make sure all those beans are fully incorporated into the rice. And we're just going to let this rest for about five minutes. Let those beans get a bit heated up by the heat of the rice and everything going on in the pot. And this is looking absolutely gorgeous. Super delicious. All right. And after about a few minutes of it just resting and letting those beans heat up, we're going to plate it up. By the way, if you want, you could add a little hot sauce to the mix. You could add up to about a tablespoon or two. That's up to you. You don't have to add it, of course. You could also just add it when you plate it up individually. I like a little bit of it in there, so I'm going to stir that in. Okay, and now we're ready to serve. All right, and here we go. Rice, red beans. Make sure you get plenty of the sausage in there, all the veggies, of course, beans. You want it all. And there we have it. Red beans and rice looking oh so nice. All right, let's try it out. And here it is. Red beans and rice. So nice. Let's give it a try. Look at this. You want the rice, by the way. It should kind of, like cling together. Or rice should be nice and huggy with each other. Let's try it out. Okay. <laughs> there is literally like a brass band that I can hear in my head right now the second this entered my mouth. I hear the horns, I hear the trombone, I can hear the strutting of the shoes on the cobblestone. That's how good this is. Richard, get in here and try it. Is there cobblestone in New Orleans or, or Mobile? No, not really. No? All right, well, I hear the beads clanging on the wrought iron. There you go. All right, Iron. Richard, let me know what you think 
of these red beans and rice. It's good. Mmm. Yeah, that good? Yeah, that's really good. We put a little it's bit of hot sauce. Oh, I say I put a little bit of hot sauce in there. I think it gives it a nice kick. I'm gonna put a little more. Yeah, you can always add a little bit more. But the rice, tell me, describe it. Is the rice cooked well? And yeah, the rice is cooked perfectly. You've got the peppers in there. You really pull out that, you know, that New Orleans flavor. And the sausage. Celery, sausage. Mm-hmm. Kind of sausage, it's great. Perfect, yeah. this is andouille. That is andouille, but like I said, it could be a smoked sausage, it could be kaneka sausage if you can find it in the south. Uh, it can be, a kielbasa will work just fine here. Any smoked sausage, usually you got the smoked sausage is pre-cooked, right? Mm -hmm. So you just slice it up and that's it. The thing I love about this, even though it's red beans and rice, and sometimes people with Instant Pot recipes use uncooked beans when they do it and they cook the rice separately from that, I feel like this is much easier to do it this way, and the beans really hold their form beautifully. There's no mushiness of them. You add them at the very end, like I said, just let them rest right from the can uh, into the pot, and they will heat up from the pot itself. And I feel like adding the juices from the beans in there adds an additional layer of flavor depth. So uh, you approve. Good, yeah. Uh, my my Alabamian, he's from the state that originated Mardi Gras, as we discussed this. Before New Orleans existed. There you go, he's a history buff, he knows mm -hmm. these things. Um, he approves and that's all that matters to me. I hope you approve as well. Tell me in the comments, or maybe don't. Sometimes the comments can be like crazy. <laughs> this one's gonna be definitely uh, maybe a little controversial, but look, stamp of approval that a Yankee made some red beans and rice that a southerner approves of. Yeah, the ham broth is an exceptionally good touch. If you can get your hands on some ham better than bouillon base, highly recommend it to use it for your broth. Or you can, like I said, it's not necessary, you can use any broth of your choice, or you can add a ham hock. You could actually also keep the ham hock in there even with the sausage if you wanted to. That's fine, you just remove it at the end before adding the beans after it's pressure cooked. But this is delicious. Mmm, okay. Before I eat this entire bowl, I want you to know, in case you didn't, that I wrote, not one, the orange one, the original. Not two, the blue one, the lighter cookbook. Not three, the yellow cookbook, which is my simple comfort, simple comfort food. But four, four cookbooks. This one is my latest, it's the green one, super shortcut instant pot, and that doesn't lie, no instant pot recipe in this book will ever exceed five to 10 ingredients. Some recipes are just dump and go, some just have three steps or less. And every single recipe in this book has gorgeous step-by-step -step color photos. Look, I gave you a little bit of a little teaser, broccoli cheddar risotto. And every single recipe, on top of it all, is going to tell you how to have it for if you have a household of one to two. So it, there's no guesswork, there's a timing bar, it's everything you'd want in a cookbook, and then some. You could follow me at facebook.com slash pressurelowcooking. If you have Facebook, definitely follow me. Follow me so I can feed you. We could feed each other. You like me, and I feed you. Simple as that. Well, with recipes, that is. I can't really very well now be a Santa Claus situation and go to everyone's house and uh, make meals. And Plus, I don't think I'd fit down the chimney. Of course, at Pressure Low Cooking on all the other social channels and my website, PressureLowCooking.com, which is my blog. You know, you just go there. Thank you so much again, and remember, the next time you want to go to the Mardi Gras and you feel a little under the weather, just stay at home and make some red beans and rice, because they go really nice together. Enjoy. Mm. So good.